I'm going to continue my series of obsessive calculations and modeling of Lagrangian systems. And so I have one here that I wanted to try, and I'm calling it the spring mount pendulum. So let me describe the system, and then we'll just jump right into it. Uh, I am going to model, I'm going to, I'm going to do the calculations. I'm going to do some of the, the symbolic work in uh, with SymPy Python, uh, and then I'm going to model this in GlowScript. And I'm going to check the energy this time, okay, because I, I don't always do that. I'm going to check that. So here's the system. I have a pendulum, so mass on a string, a stick. It's a stick. Uh, and that stick is connected to a uh, spring, and this spring can only move up and down. So the first thing that we want to do in a system like this is to say, okay, how many degrees of freedom? How many de variables would I need to completely describe the system? And if it was just a pendulum, that'd be one, right? Just the angle theta. So let's just go ahead and say that angle theta. But now that this can move up and down, I need to describe that too. I'm actually going to call this S. Okay, so that's S. So this can move up and down, and that's a spring constant K. I didn't put that up there. That's a mass M. Gravity's G. Uh, and now we want to model the motion. So one of the ways to do this is to use the Lagrangian. So the Lagrangian is the kinetic energy minus the potential. And if I write the kinetic energy minus the potential, then I can use the Euler Lagrange equation to find the differential equation of motion by saying the partial of that Lagrangian with respect to some of the vari one variable, theta, let's say, minus the time derivative of the partial of L with respect to the, der the time derivative of the variable, theta dot, I'm calling it QI, that's QI, and QI dot, and that should be equal to zero. And so we use the notation, the dot notation is just a shorthand notation for derivative with respect to time. Let's get to it. So one of the things that we always have to worry about is the kinetic energy. How do I define the kinetic energy of this thing that can, in terms of the angle theta and s, right? Because this can move up and down, but it can also swing. So it's, it's kind of complicated. It's not polar. I can't use polar coordinates um, because the pivot point isn't stationary. The answer is always to write things in terms of Cartesian coordinates. Because in Cartesian coordinates in two dimensions, I can say t is 1 half m x dot squared plus y dot squared. That is the velocity in Cartesian coordinates. That works. So I can write that. So then if I can just get an expression for x and y in terms of theta and s, then all I'll have to do is do the algebra. And that's where I'm going to use uh, SymPy Python. So uh, let's just say if this is the origin right there, then what's the x value of this? Well, it only depends on the x value is right here. So I can say x is going to be equal to r times sine of theta, right? And so it doesn't matter how this moves up and down. That's always going to be true. So for the y component, if I start right there, I have to go down an amount s. So it's going to be minus s. And then down another amount, which is this side right here, minus r cosine theta. So those are my my. Cartesian coordinates. Now I can say what's x dot, what's y dot. I can square them, add them together, and get the kinetic energy. I can also get the potential energy. It's going to be mgy uh, plus one half k s squared. I can go ahead and just say that in terms of s. So that's the spring potential energy, and that's the gravitational potential energy. And y, I know that. So really, after that. It's taking the derivatives, squaring it, find the kinetic energy, plug it into the Euler-Lagrange equation, solving for, um, I want to get s double dot equals, and I want to get theta double dot equals, and then I can model it. Okay, so that's really all the prep work we need to do. We can jump over to, to SymPy, and we can solve the rest of the stuff over there. So let's do that. Okay, so here I am, switching to the computer get my monitor set up correctly. Okay, Beep, right there. So this is, uh, I'm actually using Google Colab. Let's see, is that a little bit too big? I didn't check that beforehand. That's good. So Google Colab uh, has a Python you can run in a web page for free, and it works pretty well. Uh, so let's just get to the code. I don't want to give a big, um, long spiel on this whole thing, but the first thing I need to do is to import SymPy. So I can say import SymPy as 
S SP. And I'm going to run that. That means that whenever I want to access the SymPy libraries, I can just say SP dot, and I can say whatever I want. And it's still running. So this is one of the, the downsides of using the Google is that it can take some amount of time to load these things. Well, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna start typing anyway. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to declare, see, got it, is to declare the variables that I need to use. So I need uh, time, I need G, R, M, and K. And so those are gonna be a, a type of thing in SymPy called symbols. So I'm gonna say sp.symbols and then I just need to say what I'm going to represent them as, and the same thing. It's just going to be T, no, no, T, G, R, M, and K. That's it. Uh, next thing I need to do is to find my other variables. I have two more variables that are going to be functions of those other variables, and that's S and theta. So I'm going to say uh, theta and S are also symbols, and they are going to be the symbols of... Um, I'm going to call it, I learned my lesson here, theta and s. So you can write theta as a Greek letter theta with a, with a, a backslash, but I'm not going to do that uh, because I don't really care how it looks. I care about the code. And so I'm going, to, I'm going to do something with that. Now, these are functions, so I need to tell them that they're functions. So I can say the class is sp.function, capital F on the function. Now I need to say what they're functions of. So theta equals theta as a function of t, and s equals s as a function of t also. Next, I need to define uh, the derivatives. I need theta dot, theta double dot, I need s dot, uh, s double dot. So let's say theta dot equals the derivative of theta with respect to time. So I can do that with symbolic math too. sp dot diff for differential of theta with respect to time. And then I need uh, the theta double dot is going to be theta. I'm going to call it d dot for double dot. It's sp, the derivative of theta dot with respect to time. I don't like when it does that. Same thing for s. s dot equals sp dot diff. Stop that. fp dot diff. I see I turned that off. Let me just check this real quick. Preferences. Editor. Automa automatically close brackets. I okay. Don't don't do that. Maybe that's it. I turned off all the automatic stuff. Miscellaneous. No. Okay. Power level. Okay. Let's just see if that helps. Um, oh, so it's the differential of s with respect to t, and then I need s double dot. It's the derivative of s dot with respect to t. Oh, see, I still did it. Okay. So let's just check. Let's just say s double dot, and let's just run this. And let's just, I like to do that just to make sure things are running. Okay, so it does second derivative of s with respect to t. That's what I want. Okay, now I'm going to define x and y. So x is r times sp dot sine theta. Right? Now, so sine is, a built, is not built into Python. I need to get it from SymPy, so that's why that's sp dot sine. And then y is negative s minus r times sp dot cosine, cosine theta. Now I can de define the kinetic energy. So let's say t equals, I'm going to do it the wrong way, or, and I'll make it a better way, 1 half times m times x, squared plus, x dot squared plus y dot squared. So I need to take the derivatives. sp dot diff x t squared plus sp dot diff yt squared. Now let's just look at what that kinetic energy looks like. And you'll see right here it has a 0 0.5 instead of 1 half. We can fix that by saying sp dot rational 1, 2. So this, is, this just turns it into an actual fraction. And you can see now it has it right there. You can simplify that if you want. Um, it doesn't really matter. I don't really, ca I don't really care. But if you wanted to simplify it, you could add dot s simplify and then run it. And then it may simplify it a little bit if it can. But again, we don't care. We want now the potential u equals m times g times y plus uh, sp dot rational. 
one half times uh, k times s squared. And then l is t minus u. And let's print l, just for fun. OK, so there it is. That's that. OK, now what I'm going to do is I want to define, uh, I'm going to get two Euler-Lagrange equations, right? I have one Euler-Lagrange equation for theta and one for s. I need to define both of those. So let's call the first one uh, with respect to uh, s. So I'm going to say L, I'm going to give it a name, LE1 for Euler-Lagrange number one. And it's going to be the derivative of L with respect to s. So sp dot diff ls minus the derivative sp dot diff, the time derivative of the derivative sp dot diff uh, ls dot t, right? So that says this is the deriv the partial of L with respect to s dot, and then I take the derivative of that with respect to t. And that's my first one. And let's just copy that and paste it because the second one is very similar. And that way I don't have to type diff. Who has time to type diff, right? No one's got time for that. I don't have time for that. And then I could even just look at this theta dot. Okay, so those are my two differential equations. If you want to print them out, you can. LE2, run it. It's always nice just to check to make sure there's not an error. Okay, so it looks nice. Okay, so now what do I need to do? Well, I have these two differential equations, and this is, this is uh, in SymPy, it likes things equal to zero. So I can say this equation, and it's saying, okay, that's equal to zero. I get that. So I already did that, right? I don't have to put the equal zero. Uh, so I have two equations that are equal to zero, and I want to solve two equations in, at, uh, with two unknowns. It's possible that that there could only be s double dot in one of the equations and you don't actually have to do that. But maybe you do, who knows? But let's just solve two equations, two unknowns. And so the way we're gonna do that is to say, uh, make a list of solutions and the solutions are gonna be sp.solve. Now I need to say what equations I'm gonna solve. I'm gonna solve LE1 and LE2. And then what variables am I gonna solve for? I'm gonna solve for s double dot, theta double dot. And then that's going to give me a list of two things. Let's just, I'll just print that out. So I'll just show you it works. Sols. Okay, so it is a list of two uh, solutions. I can actually access them one at a time if you want to see what they look like. I can say uh, sols theta double dot, and then I'll say dot simplified just so it looks a little bit better, and we'll see what it looks like. And then there's my, oh, I did put it as theta. That's weird. I didn't even put, I didn't even put the slash theta. I guess I use someone else's old example where it just automatically interprets that as theta. That's pretty nice. Thanks. Um, so there's my solution of uh, this is equal to zero. No, this is theta double dot. That's theta double dot. And then I can do the same thing for s double dot. Okay. But what I'm going to do is just go down here and say print. And this is a, a hacky way to do it. Uh, s double dot equals, and then I'm going to say souls uh, s double dot, and that's going to print the s double dot solution. And then I'm going to say print uh, theta double dot equals quote comma souls theta double dot, and let's run that. So this is what I want in my code, right? Because now I have s double dot. Now I have theta double dot. Now I can do a numerical calculation. So let me just jump back over to the paper and remind you of how to do a numerical calculation with these functions. I'm going to do this in Trinket Python so I can model it. I feel like I do this all the time, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to go over it again, does it? No, I don't think it does. Okay, so here's the paper. So now that I have s double dot, I'm going to break this into a small time interval of, let's say, 0 0.001 seconds. During that time interval, I'm going to assume s double dot is constant, which it's not. But that's fine. And if it's constant, then I can say s double dot is the change in s dot with respect to time. And I can say this is s2 dot minus s one dot over delta t. So it's the chain, this is s2 dot is the 
s dot at the end of the time interval, and that's at the beginning. Now, if I know it at the beginning, I can find it at the end by saying s2 dot equals s1 dot plus s double dot delta t. Now I just know it after 0.001 seconds. I can do the same thing for s dot. I can assume that's constant. So s2 dot is delta s over delta t equals s2 minus s1 over delta t. This is important. And then I can say s2 equals s1 plus s2 dot delta t. And now I have it at the end of the time interval. So what I do is calculate s double dot from my equation that I calculated. I can calculate that, use that to update s dot, use that to update s, and then do it for the next time interval, and the next, and the next, and the next. And do the same thing for theta double dot. And that's what I'm going to do. So I have those equations. So the first thing I need to do is let's go ahead and um, one of the things is to get that code into Python code. And I'm switching back over here to the computer. Um, this stuff right here, uh, you know, there's a problem that says derivative theta with respect to t right there, and I want theta double dot or theta dot. So let's just copy all. Let's just copy all of this. What's that do? No. Okay. Let's see. Copy all of that. And this is my way of doing it, right? Which is not the best way of doing it. Uh, I'm going to go to a text editor. Let's open a new window, and I'm going to paste this and I'm going to make it bigger. Uh, so why did I paste it like that? Let's see, format, make plain text. Okay, there's better, make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so let me just put a, a space right here. So let's just go through and I'm just gonna do a find and replace. So I'm gonna find right here, you see I have theta as a function of t. So I'm gonna say theta, as a function of t, I'm going to replace that with theta. And I'm going to replace all. So that's gone. Now you see this right here. I'm just going to copy this. Derivative theta t right there. I'm going to copy that and paste it up here. And then I'm going to replace that with theta dot. Replace all. See, so I'm just going through. I'm looking through stuff that I see. Uh, here I have looking good looking good okay cosine good okay then theta double dot here I have sine da, 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 da. it looks good okay so let's just copy all of this and now let's go back over here and I'm going to use this in trinket okay so I'm going to go ahead and paste this let's just go ahead and put this as a quote as a comment because we'll use it later so this is a way that we can model the motion of this whole thing um, and I'm gonna make this bigger so that we can all see. Let's actually, one of the things I do, okay, I'll do that in a second. Let's make it bigger. Okay, so uh, if you look at my picture, I really wanna, I wanna draw everything. So I'm gonna have two like pivot points. I'm gonna have a mount point and then a mount point for the spring and they have no mass. And then I'm gonna have a string and then I'm gonna have the other mass. So let's start with the pivot. I'm gonna call it pivot and it's just gonna be a sphere. Oh, and I do need coordinates. Let's go pick some quantities. Mass is 0 0.02. Uh, K is 10. Uh, R is 0.3. G is 9.8. Um, what other parameters did I have? I do need time. Time is 0. DT is 0 0.001. Um, I need uh, the initial, I need my initial condition. So I need an initial s, I need initial s dot, an initial theta, initial theta dot. So let's say s is zero, s dot is zero, theta is, let's say, 30 times pi divided by 180, and theta dot is equal to zero. Okay, so now I can make the pivot. I'll make that bigger, bigger, so you can see. Okay, so pivot is a sphere. I'm going to put it at the origin, set the vector 0, 0, 0. If you have questions about VPython, you know, you ask them. I have tons of videos on this stuff I can help. Uh, how big is this going to be? Let's say 0 0.005. And then let's make pivot 2 uh, a sphere. Its position is going to be equal to pivot.pos minus vector 
zero s let's see plus vector zero s zero right because it's s below it oh that's minus s that's the y coordinate and then it will have a radius the same now they're right on top of each other and that's fine let's just run it and see if it actually works i always like to run things intermittently to see if that works okay so it's zoomed in it doesn't really look that great and that's fine let's go ahead and save this spring mount pendulum that's what i'm calling it and i'm going to give you the code don't worry okay now i want to make a spring connecting these two and i could draw it as a helix but i'm just going to draw it as a as a cylinder so i'm going to say spring is a cylinder uh, the position is going to be pivot.pos the axis is going to be pivot2.pos minus pivot.pos and then the uh, the radius is going to be equal to 0 0.004 I don't know I'm making up stuff there again you can't see it so I'm not even going to run it okay now I need to put the other mass and the string so I'm going to say mass is a sphere it oh let me go ahead and calculate x and y so x is going to be uh, r times sine of theta y is negative s minus r times cosine theta that's just that's just what we had from the thing so now i can say mass equals sphere position equals um vector x y zero all right i already calculated x and y uh, the radius, it's obviously got to be bigger because it's the mass. Let's say radius is equal to 0 0.005. So 0, 1, is that too big? That's too big. 0, 7. And let's make it yellow. And make trail equals true, so it'll leave a trail. Now let's make the string. It's a cylinder. It's going to be mounted at the pivot 2. So the position is pivot 2.pos. And the axis is going to be from pivot 2 to the mass. So it's going to be mass.pos minus pivot.pos. And then the radius, the other one I made, let's make it 0 0.006. I don't know. Okay, let's run that. Something bad happened. What happened? Oh, did I not give the radius? Something's too big. Oh, that's why. This is a, a, a radius of one. I left off the wrong thing, so it made it one, and it, just, it was in, all encompassing. It made up everything. Okay, so that is too big. Let's change this to 0 0.04. It just looks right. Okay. That should be a little bit smaller. 0 0.03. Okay, I think we're good. We have everything. So now what we're going to do is to say while t is less than 5. Run it for 5 seconds. And since I have a time step of 1 1,000th, so I'm going to say rate is 1,000. So that means I'm going to do 1,000 loops per second. So the first thing I need to do is to calculate theta double dot and s double dot. And I, oh, I have it right here. So let's, let's copy this and put that down here. And let's do the other one and copy it. And that's from SimPy and put it down here. Okay, now I can update s dot. s dot equals s dot plus s double dot times dt. Now I can update theta dot. Theta dot equals theta dot plus theta double dot times dt. Now I can update s. s equals s plus s dot times dt. Theta equals theta plus theta dot times dt. t equals t plus dt because I always forget that and run forever. Uh, so now I need to move everything. I need to move pivot to, I need to move the spring, I need to move the string, I need to move the mass. So the first thing I'm, I'm going to do is actually recalculate x and y because I'm going to need those. So theta changed, so these change, and s changed. So there's that. Okay, let's move pivot to. 
So pivot2.pos is going to be equal to pivot.pos, which is 0, plus vector 0, negative s0. Same as before, but s changed. And then I'm going to change the spring. So spring.axis, the, the position stays the same. It's going to be pivot2.pos minus pivot.pos. Now I need to move mass 2, mass, or the mass, mass.pos equals vector x, y, 0, right? I already, I already calculated x, y, and 0. Now I need to move the string. I need to move the, the position of the string and the axis. So string.pos equals pivot2.pos, and string.axis equals mass.pos minus pivot2.pos, and let's run. I never saved this. I should save it again. Okay. Nothing happened. S is not, oh, I did, I, I did miss something. I missed something in my find and replace down here. So S dot S, S, S of T. See, I missed that right there. It should just be S. And they're right there. Let's see if it's in this one. Here it is too. I'm, I failed. I'm a failure. Okay. Let's see if that runs. There we go. It's kind of cool. Okay, so the, my spring I made, it seems like it's going too slow. Did I put it... Oh, I did. I had one, two. There. Okay, that looks better. Cool. Okay, but you, you get something like this, you're like, is it real though? So there's a couple of things we can do to check and see if it's realistic. And number one is, what would happen if I had like a super stiff uh, spring? Then it should just be a pendulum, right? So let's see if I increase the spring constant to, let's say, 100 and run it. I mean, it's not, it still wiggles a little bit, but that looks pretty good. And we could compare that to a real thing and see if it is indeed legit. I, the other thing I can do is to uh, put the initial theta at zero. So and then it'd just, be, it'd just be an oscillating spring. And I could plot the motions of those. I'm not going to do it. I'm, I could plot those. But let's do this, say, zero times and put this back at 10 and run it. So now the, it's going to start vertical. And there you go. I mean, I guess it's right. It, it's not it's not obviously wrong, so that's good. But what I want to do is to plot the kinetic energy and the potential energy and see if they, and the total energy, and see if they're constant. So let's make a graph. So I like to put my graphs up here at the top. G1 equals graph. Uh, X title equals time. I'll just put it as T. Y title equals energy. Uh, and then let's say the width is 500 and the height is 250. Uh, now I need to make some graphs. So I'm gonna say FT for the kinetic energy is a G curve. Color is color dot blue. That's for kinetic. And then for potential be FU, G curve, color equals color dot red. And then FE for total. And let's just say that's G curve and let's just leave it black. Now I need to calculate the kinetic energy, right? So there's a couple things I could do here. I could uh, take the derivative of x and y and find x dot and y dot to get the kinetic energy. Um, but I already calculated the kinetic energy before too, so I could I could just print it out in terms of from my uh, from up here, right? So let's just let's just go up here and let's see what happens if I put t dot simplify and run that. So there's my kinetic energy. I think I think I can use that. Um, let's just say print. Let's look over here. If I print it, it won't it won't parse it. Uh, it will just put it as a uh, code. Okay, so let, that's fine. Let's just copy that and use that as my uh, as my thing. And I, I could recalculate it more than way, but I don't really care. So down here, I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to say t equals. Now, I do need to fix this. This is theta dot right there. 
data dot. Uh, this is sine of data t. That's fine. Here's s dot. S dot. Here is uh, data dot. Here is s dot. And that's it. That wasn't too bad. Okay. Where's there, why is there a 10 right there? And a 1s. I must have copied those accidentally. Okay. So now let's calculate uh, u. u is uh, m times g times y. I just calculated y. Plus 1 half times k times s squared, which I calculated s. So now I can, and let's just go ahead and plot it. So f t dot plot is going to be t t. f u dot plot is t u. f e dot plot is t and then t plus u. Let's see if this actually works. No. Theta is not a function in theta t, so I, I just didn't copy that. There it is right there, theta. Missing a right parentheses. I know where it is, right? Cause t is this stuff, sine of theta. That should be theta right there. See, if I would have done my other method, I would have been fine. Okay, so that's strange. Okay, so um, is the the total is the total is negative point six two. It doesn't look like it's working. Um, let's put this back to swinging. Okay, so that looks cool. Um, the total energy. I mean, these, I, I'm happy, but here the total energy is not zero. Oh, it doesn't have to be zero, it has to be constant. That's right, so it is constant. The total energy is constant. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, let's try, um, I, I do want to try one thing. So I'm pretty happy, right? The total energy is constant. Uh, the kinetic energy changes, the potential energy changes. Let's do this. What if, just for fun, what if I have uh, the spring constant. If I pick a spring constant uh, such that the uh, natural frequency of the spring and the natural frequency of the pendulum, even though it's larger than, I'll change, I'll change this to 10 degrees, um, is the same. So the, the frequency for a pendulum is uh, the square root of g over r. And the square root of, uh, I mean, for a spring, it's k over m. So let's say k, I'll put it down here, k equals m times g over r. So they kind of match. They have the same natural frequency. Let's just see what happens if I run that. I mean, that it's kind of cool, right? And I, I, I think it, it, it does something different, I think. Now, um, oh, look at that. That's weird. Okay, well, we can play around with this some more. It is a fun example of uh, Lagrangian system um, and I want to play with this more but I'm trying to I'm, I don't have a, a clear goal right now so I'm just going to play around I'll give you the code to this um, I have a link to my other uh, I'll put a link to my Lagrange my classical mechanics series which a whole bunch more Lagrangian problems if you need them uh, down below and if you have any questions just put the comments down below